we're going to take an in-depth look at the Texas Pacific Land Trust TPL with special emphasis on the word trust and you can see that this is the absolute antithesis of the cues and the history of this Texas Pacific Land Trust goes back to the mid 1800s so that's the 19th century where they were trying to create a railroad to go to San Diego from Louisiana and hook up with other railroads in the east there and this involves the rail baron Jay Gould too back in that era and little did they know back then in the 1860s and 80s that the terminus at that time to the east was going to be in the Ranger oil fields so if you ever see Ranger oil in your scans that has something to do with this and then the Permian Basin in the west and we all know about that so the trust receives royalties on millions of acres in the Permian and Ranger Basin from the oil revenues without having to do anything but just sit back and rake it in. And the Texas and Pacific Railroad is now long defunct and the land trust lives on. And lately, in the last maybe half a year or so, going back to late 2022, there's been a fight between stockholders and, I suppose, the trust to stop the trust from becoming a corporation because as it stands now, the trust cannot issue any more shares of stock and if they turn this into a corporation, they're going to split the stock maybe 20 times, who knows how many times, and bring it down for the regular trader and investor to jump on board with making millions for the management of this trust that could become a corporation. And if you would like to go in depth and find out more about the ongoing saga of this, you can Google this or go to Seeking Alpha and look for this article by this person here or company, Wyco Researcher. And it's definitely very interesting. I read it. It's quite a long article. So the major stockholders for a long time have been institutional investors. And you can see why I look at the price that this thing was skyrocketing up. And they have been bailing big time since the end of 2022 when this came to light, what the trust wanted to do. And this TPL was by far the darling of 2022 when energy was doing really well. Look at this skyrocket from about a thousand up to, I don't know, 3,000, just about, you know, 27, 25 or so. And they're incorporated in Delaware, and it went to court in Delaware, where the big institutional heavy hitters were duking it out with the trust and filed a letter for voters to bring that to light, what's going on here with the trust. And they ended up not getting the votes to turn the trust into a corporation but it's not over yet and the drama and soap opera continues and that leaves us to today i'll zoom into the current area now and look at all these recycles here designated by the big r they were 13s and they went past my recycle count of 18 
the mark has it sanctioned at 21, but I use 18 for all except this sequential cluster and combo cluster, which are set at the DeMarc sanctioned 21 recycle count. And when R's print for recycle, that's a show of strength for the prevailing trend, which is down, and the risk levels become lost too. However, there were a few that became qualified and confirmed. You can see here there's a strict combo qualified and confirmed by risk along with the other two and then the aggressive and variable combos here and here's the sequential disqualified by risk down at this level 1250 that will be an area I will be watching closely and there's another sequential cluster by countdown that's on 9, so that's definitely something to watch for another 13 in a risk level. And you can see the traders and investors got excited down here when this sequential printed after the strict combo here, so that's what you're looking for. Get that first, and then when this shows up, you would think that that's exhaustion of trend, and it was for a while, and then back into the abyss. And then these got qualified and confirmed on this confirmation bar here. I'll go through it once again. There was a down close, followed by an up close, followed by a down close below the levels in question. Then price opened lower than the close of this bar, ticked lower than all four bars in the sequence, and then closed below the close of the bar on the 22nd, and that's qualified and confirmed. So let's keep the 1250 price in mind as we go through the rest of the charts. And let's keep in mind that the yield is 1.01%, so I think the dividend quarterly is around the mid $3, so $3.50 or so. And that's pretty good, but of course as expensive as can be. Now let's take a look at the D-Wave and the zigzag indicator on a cloud chart and the C printed here on December 28th and just kept traveling downwards and this is where it ends up today and the D wave down wave 5 printed here and it traveled to join the C5 now and the zigzag is going in a side trajectory but with a slight up trend to it so the D wave up wave one needs to print and maybe that could have a nice uptrend here and to print that D wave up wave one there would need to be a high higher than the previous 13 bars and the one will print and then if it decides to head south again if there's a low lower than all 21 previous bars below this C where it printed here preferably there will be a zero count for the up wave and that would negate the one and it would have to start all over again but we're getting way ahead of ourselves and just hypothesizing there and the marks D wave down projection is at this level and I'm sure if I calculated mine using highs and lows instead of closes it would be a bit higher than that but nothing to worry about that yet and the QQE, which is similar to RSI, the fast QQE, 
is below the slow QQE, so it's the fast. It's more like the RSI, but nonetheless is below its slow QQE, so that indicates more downside. And the cloud conversion line has gone back under its baseline, which is never a good thing to happen. And propulsion momentum for both 50% and 100% was qualified and confirmed on this bar, just like we looked at the risk levels. So when it gets down to the 1,250 level, we'll take stock to see if it continues below that. And then the exhaustion levels for propulsion 50% and 100% are here's 50% and then the 100% qualified and confirmed exhaustion down and the Shande indicator did make it down below 75 back at the beginning of May negative 81.76 and it's just below zero now at negative 27.35 so there's still a long way to go to the downside if it wants to and the slow trigger for ATM trigger is getting close to going under its oversold line there and could be gathering with pressure up and the fast trigger down down here in the abyss and volumes are atrocious. That's 34,860. So that's low volume. Even the high one back here was only 44,000. So it's getting close to the last seller selling the last share. And there was a qualified and confirmed demand line back here. You can see that it was confirmed on this bar along with everything else and that gives a projection down here at 1163.71 and the 4918 rainbow pattern is now officially down so the 4 is below the 9 the 9 is below the 18 and so that's not a good sign and REI should have printed a region starting here on the 21st and it has not I'm going to have to ask the mark analytics about that so for now we'll just say that the region started here on the 21st so it's been more than six bars below its oversold negative 40 line and rock is already below its oversold line and if dm1 goes under its oversold line that's a really ominous sign that have all three under oversold it just could start sailing away like over here and rei too with very little chance of a bump up once in a while so I haven't seen that for years to see that. So another thing to watch. And the ADX of the DMI is at 24.49. And it looks like it wants to start pulling back on the stick and heading up, which would be an indication of a strong trend starting. So this downtrend could get even stronger if this starts pointing up and the DMI minus is well above the plus and they're both separating the minus is going up and the plus is going down not a good sign and the psychological line is under its oversold line so there are plenty of sellers and the Williams percent R is below its oversold negative 80 line and if it gets back above it that would be a good sign but 
you can see is back here once it starts getting into a strong downtrend it can just stay under there and the Williams volatility trend stop was hit at this level on the bar from Friday and the megaphone by seven end count has printed and the MACD is below its signal line. You can see the QQE is like a smoothed version of RSI, similar but just a little bit smoother. And the ultimate oscillator is giving us a glimmer of hope. It's pointed up a little bit, so that puts it in a divergence. If I had a tiny little arrow right here pointed up and the price pointed down here, so that could be a fledgling bullish divergence there. The commodity channel index would need to start pointing up also. And looking back at the Williams percent R, that's a bit of a bullish divergence too. It's pointed up these last two bars, so it's really nothing to bank on. And you can see price was headed down, so something to think about and keep an eye on. And the short, intermediate, and long-term KSTs are all below zero. And the intermediate term is kind of going sideways. It looks like it wants to dive down below its signal line here. And the long term KST shows a divergence with price here as it's pointed up, but way below zero. So we really can't bank on that either. This needs to get back above zero, but Nonetheless, it is somewhat of a long-term divergence with price in a bullish manner. So here's an indicator I have never shown before. And it's the overlap indicator from DeMarc. And I fiddled with the parameters and came up with this overlap here. And this one could be the one I pay the most attention to as the deciding factor when to get back into TPL. So what we're looking for is for this overlap to print at the end of pretty strong downdrafts like this. Sometimes small ones like this. However, it must coincide with the previous three bars where the bar before it prints here should be a down close and then the one before that should be an up close and then the one before that should be a down close so that did not meet the criteria here but it did go off to the upside a bit and I would not have gotten on board with that. This one I show no leeway with this one. It must meet this criteria that I just mentioned for the lows of downdrafts. So you can see before that there was one printed here and the bar before it hit an up close and then the one before that had a down close and then the one before that had a down close so that did not meet the criteria and then this one printed and this one bar before it had a down close and the one before it a down close and also the one before that so that didn't meet the criteria and you can see it went sideways and then started heading down so now we'll wait to see if and when this overlap prints down here along with all those other indicators and I think this one will be the deciding factor